It's Madden NFL 24, and it's presented by EA Sports. It's the Buffalo Bills and the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it comes your way next. It originally opened in 1995 as Jacksonville Municipal Stadium when this franchise entered the NFL. We welcome you to Jacksonville and TIAA Bank Field. But today, two AFC teams set to do battle. It should be a good one, as it'll be the Buffalo Bills taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and as we look at this matchup, Every time there's something different to focus on it. So I'll just ask you, what do you see here in this one? Well, Rembrandt, you've given me a pretty blank canvas to focus on, haven't you? Yeah. Where do you think I'm going to go with this? Uh, secondary? You know me. You know me well, right? In a game like this, it's always about the secondary. Can they handle the passing attack and make a few plays? about ready to get us started and off we go from Jacksonville taken at the goal line and out a little across the 25 to the 27 for the Buffalo offense coming out and it is Josh Allen who is at the helm and in this league there are many quarterbacks who have their most success running the ball while there are others who have big arms there aren't too many guys who can do both and at the end of many games this guy leads his team not just in passing, but in rushing as well. Allen going to go to the air right away. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 13 yards on the game's opening play. And we see the emphasis early here. Get your star receiver involved able to do it successfully. Not a bad start to begin with, that's for sure. And to me, this play says, our guy is better than your guy's. Because you know, a player of his stature, he won't just be single covered all game long. It's gonna involve multiple people. And right away, they told the other team, guess what, he's just better. Tackle made by Devin Lloyd, the linebacker. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Allen's throw is complete. It'll go as a gain of four, and now we've got a third and three. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why, what we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. It goes as a gain of six, and it's a first down. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen. That's caught by his tight end, Dawson Knox. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars 18. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Good work here by the tight end. It's a crossing route off of play action. They're going to let the slot receiver run a post to hopefully let the defense think they're taking a shot. And then they bring the tight end underneath, and it winds up a first down. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. 
Allen going to throw. The right side here caught by Kincaid. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, no question, this is exactly how they wanted to start this football game. And nice pass there. And now they're set up beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off, partner. And that means they've got to execute at this stage of the field. So we've seen many teams march it right to the goal line and not catch. And Cook will get in for a Bills touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Bills get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. It's not often you talk about statement drives coming right at the start of a game, but that was some statement there. That drive took them the length of the field, and as I look at the clock, ate up nearly the entire first quarter as well. Great work up front, clearing space, and an ideal finish on the touchdown run. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They're led by the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft, Trevor Lawrence. And you want to talk about enormous expectations being placed on a quarterback. How about what Trevor Lawrence faced coming out of college? But the good thing for him, he's used to it. He had the same type of expectations leaving high school and going to Clemson. They always expect him to be a franchise savior whatever team he joins. And to his credit, he shouldered those expectations and doing everything in his power to follow through. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. That's the end of the first quarter with the score Bill 7 after one seven nothing on EA Sports second quarter now from Jacksonville and it's the Jags with the football ball on the 27 here's a second down and six they'll send a receiver in motion to the left now fake on a jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. But Jacksonville first down on a pickup of 17. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Here's second and ten. The Lawrence will throw. toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's Lawrence. That is caught. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills 35. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. If points result, we'll call this play significant. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 35-yard line. ETN up the middle, and he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. 
Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Well, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Trinity is right with a pick, and the Bills are going to take over at their own 28-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. And they'll be looking to make this a two-score advantage. Had the touchdown on their first drive, Charles. Hey, they can get up two scores here on the road. That's a heck of a start. And not only have they thought about it, I wonder if they visualized it. I remember playing, and they used to turn the lights out in our meeting room and run through a situation like this and say, just think about what it would be like to be up on the road and take the crowd out of it. Maybe they did some of that. Brings up second and four. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. And from the 34, here's second and four. Allen now looks to throw. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Allen so complete to Shakir. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and five at the yard line. From midfield, here's Allen. A quick throw, going to be caught by Diggs. And Diggs will have a Bills first down as he'll get this down to the 41. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Again, they'll throw with Allen. There's Stephon Diggs for the catch on the slant. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Here's Allen. It's complete to Diggs. And Diggs will have a Bills first down as the tackle is made at the 28-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Here's Allen on first and 10. And bringing it in, it's Davis. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. Now Allen steps away to his left. And he is 
Bengals into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Josh Allen as the first half is winding down. And the Bills would extend their lead here just before halftime. What an effort there. Sometimes you hold your breath a bit when you see your quarterback diving for the end zone. You don't want him to land on a shoulder wrong or take a big shot. But he looks none the worse for wear here. And that winds up a touchdown. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And with eight seconds on the clock, really not a lot of time to try to put anything together. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurtling through them. Final play of the half, it's Lawrence. He'll connect on the out route with Ingram. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. So we come upon halftime with our score 14 to nothing. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach and our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports halftime report. We saw some strong work from James Cook in that first half. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Touchdown game, 14-0 to score as we get rolling again here in this second half. This fielded right at the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. As they begin their second half here, Charles offensively, you know, not where they want to be, obviously. They're losing in this ball game, but very much within strength. There he goes, left side. Down to the 10. Touchdown, Jaguars! Zay Jones, 74 yards. And the Jaguars come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. McManus's point after is good, and that'll make our score 14 to 7.
After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. So here's the Bills offense now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. But Charles, they still have the lead despite their defense giving up a touchdown on the previous possession. And even though they have that lead, it feels like a back and forth ball game where to try to get momentum back, maybe they need at least three here on this drive. I think you're right about that, Brandon, because your game plan doesn't change. I do believe your urgency does because of the last score that went against your team. So what you want to do now is have your own drive and try and make sure that that momentum stays in your camp. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They run the counter with Cook to about the 35, second down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. From the 35, here's a second and seven. Here's Cook again. And they get him behind the line. So that short gain on first down quickly negated. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up. I'm getting a sense that the momentum of this game is changing since the break. Nice play there. And this D is fired up. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Throwing his Allen on third. Caught right side, Davis. And he's going to be taken down at the 39. Clearly short of the first by a few yards. Call it a gain of six on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. What hallmark of good defenses? It's understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And he didn't quite have the bank spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. At halftime, you have to feel like the defense had to be in a good position. They had to feel good about themselves. They've had this guy boxed in all game long, but after that run, that might be the breakthrough that he's looking for. Now they may have some difficulty dealing with him the rest of today. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game. First and 10 here. Looking to throw Lawrence. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. Meanwhile, Lawrence is throw taken in by Ridley here. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. And maybe that touchdown on the previous drive has re-energized this offense a little bit. They've been kind of sluggish until then. But they're showing signs of life here. And they get good yardage that time and a first down. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. Throw right side caught by Ridley. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. That's a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal gain. Throwing again here. It's Lawrence. They'll complete this to Ingram is tight end. Playing three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. It's Jaguar football, but a little work to do for them. They trail here as we start the fourth. 
They go play action with Lawrence. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Finally hauled down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop him. Impressive individual effort there. No one was going to stop him around the edge. Yeah, no doubt about it. And that's why if you play in a 4-3 base and you're a defensive end, that's why you get the big bucks. They count on you to do everything. Defend the run and, of course, get to the quarterback. A good pickup there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. That's a good bounce back play right there after taking a sack on first down. Didn't quite get it to the marker, but now they're in a much better spot for a third and short yardage call. If you're the offensive coordinator, you like looking at that section a heck of a lot better than trying to figure out third and long. They'll run with ETN. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Here we go, got to have it. Lawrence, able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I looked out at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. On first and ten, it's ETN. And that'll hurt the average a bit, as this time they're able to get him behind the line. Well, they'll come up now. This is second and long. Lawrence. And Jones has it over the middle. Brandon's okay with what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. A big play here. Third and two. Throwing now, Lawrence. That's caught on the left side by Kerr. Well, they opted not to run it. They completed the pass on third and two, but they lost yardage to bring up four. Well, give credit to the guys on the other side of the ball. They snuffed out the play, but it does bring into question, one, the play call, because they didn't run the ball there. They could have run it, and two, just not getting it. That's got to be deflating for them. Here we go. This is fourth down. And they'll try and throw for it with Lawrence. Diving for the end zone, and the ball's knocked out. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And they were hoping to get down there, get the score, and get this thing into overtime. How deflating. Absolutely. I mean, let's face it, heartbreaking. They had an opportunity, had a chance, and probably were feeling pretty good about what was going on. And that was taken away from them by their own mistake. Yeah, the opportunity squashed. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. Now a timeout called for by the defense as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Carry for a Central Florida alum, Latavius Murray. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down.
On third down, they're going to go with the option. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as a clock will stop with just 70 seconds left to go in the game. Here's Sam Martin now as he'll punt it away for the second time. On the return, here's Agnew. A very good punt, but a 16-yard return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. So here now, Lawrence and the Jaguars, down 14-7, to exactly one minute remaining. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and 10. He's going to let it fly. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. What a really nice knockdown. He has so much pressure in these situations on defensive backs. What do they talk? Play the ball, not the man, because if you have a pass interference penalty in this spot, boy, oh boy, you put your team in a bad place. Just over 50 seconds remain. Here's second and 10. Here's Lawrence. And throws it on the move, but can't connect as that falls incomplete. A couple extra defensive backs out there in the dime, and because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dime? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You having to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. Back to throw, Lawrence. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. And that's the downside of taking these big shots because they're definitely lower percentage plays. And now you look up, and it's fourth down. So not only do you have to worry about getting big yardage, you also need to just keep the game alive. The decision made for them. They've got to go. It's fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. And he did exactly what they needed him to do, Charles. Got out of bounds. They have no timeouts. And they knew that before the play even began. Still executed it. How many times have we seen it happen where you know it, yet a guy's still looking for a timeout or trying to stay in bounds? He got it done. Final minute. No timeouts at their disposal. Here's first and ten. He'll look to throw. Man open, here is Jones. And yes, he's into the end zone. So they get the late score they needed. And now the extra point can tie this thing up in the final minute. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. Now McManus to tack on the extra point. And no sweat, he picks it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. The drive summary that time, five plays. And the touchdown and PAT mean we are tied here in the final minute of play. This run all we could have asked for. All tied, final minute as the kick's away here. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Bills going to take over again on offense. They'd like to avoid overtime here, so maybe they can work the sidelines, but then defensively, how do they adjust to that if they do work the sideline? It's the old leverage game, and we usually talk about leverage at the line of scrimmage, right? Who's going to win with the low blocking and everything that goes along with that? But in this case, 
You're trying as a defender to leverage them towards the middle of the field, not let them get to the sidelines and try and tackle them in bounds in order to run the clock out. Chess match here late. At the 26-yard line. Allen, again it's Cook. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. And we need overtime to decide this one after four quarters of play. We're all even. The extra session in a moment. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Up past the 20 to the 22 yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get sent to take over here. They had that 14 0 lead, but that has evaporated as they go to work here first and 10. They start the drive with Cook. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. That runs successful in large part because they had a lot of extra help blocking up front. Yeah, you've got guys who can do that very, very well. In addition, they can catch the football. So sometimes when they line up with three tight ends, it's not necessarily to run it, and that gives you an advantage when you do decide to barrel off the line of scrimmage and block people downfield. Well, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Once that ball was popped in the air, you could almost hear the silence, the collective breath being held here in the stadium. Let's be honest about it. We both came out of our chairs, didn't we? All right, anytime you see the ball in the air like that, there is that collective rise, the crowd holding its breath, and boy, oh boy, the moment of truth as it comes down. Man, that was something. Everything magnified here in overtime. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a count or two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. To throw a talent. He's got his running back out of the backfield. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Oh, that's a big let off there on third down because you've got to count for the running back coming out of the backfield. They didn't, and they got burned, not just for a first down, but for big yardage as well. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 34. Again, they'll throw with Allen. It's complete to Diggs. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. Now Allen. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in. But it is hard to adjust to a pass throwing a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. Here comes a big one now in overtime. This is third and inches. Now Allen, working in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're in OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. Well, they say, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. 
Allen on target there to Stephon Diggs. Partner, remember that old film of Peyton Manning going through the route tree with his great receivers in Indianapolis? I think we're seeing the results of the same type of work here today. These guys know each other so well that they don't even have to call the play. They can just look each other and know the route that's going to be run, and usually the connection is perfect. Here's Bass now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. So that drive goes eight plays, and it's finished off by the touchdown by Stephon Diggs. To the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. For this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do. So I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Play action. It's Lawrence. And that's caught at the 25. And he's brought down after a very nice game. And how about that? In a game that's had just about everything, has that for an answer. Remember, in the past, this game would be over already. But that's a huge play there to give him a fighting chance to go down and possibly tie this game. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. among NFL tight ends, Charles, and it certainly was on display right there. And as we've seen this league continue to grow and develop, I think the tight end position is becoming harder and harder to defend because now it's elite athletes playing that position, not just the big guys who can block. How about his ability to get downfield and make plays against any defense? They'll try and run it here. And he will get into the end zone as they will indeed claim a one-point lead. Only had a couple of yards to gain there on the two-point conversion, and they were able to do it. And how many teams shy away from running the football in the two-point conversion? They treat two yards as if it were 20. If you're a good team running the ball, go to your strength. Go ahead and push it into the end zone. Yeah, they did. It worked. Well, Charles, a very simple mission anytime that you play on your home turf, and that is to defend your home turf, and today that mission was accomplished. Look, every offseason, every preseason, the head coach goes in front of the team and says, the mission for the season, defend our home field every time, split on the road, and we'll be in the playoffs. That's why defending the home field is vital. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Jaguars are winners here as we say so long from G.